this is my official uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Yvonne Mess, and I'm a children's author and illustrator and a proud member of Booklings, of the Booklings Committee and a coordinator of Rightlings, the Brisbane-based children's rights and illustrators group. But for tonight, I will be your MC uh, with the support of Jenny Stubbs, Booklings president and living children's literature advocate and treasure. I would like to begin, though, by acknowledging the Turbo and Yagara people as the traditional owners of the land on which I reside. I recognise that this land has always been under their custodianship and I pay my respect to elders past and present. I acknowledge that you might be on different lands and I invite you to share where you are joining us from tonight in the chat group. So. Welcome everyone to another exciting night of virtual romance with the rising stars of children's literature, the new Kids on the Block edition. Before we start, I have a few housekeeping rules. One, if you have technical difficulties, please let us know in the chat room or if you get kicked out for some reason, send an email to info at booklinks.org. We'll try and keep an eye on that as well. Uh, that information is also in the chat room. Please keep your camera on. I know some of you have your camera off and you might be picking your nose or you might be in your pajamas or whatever. But for us presenters and especially for our guests, it's encouraging to be able to see your lovely faces because there's nothing worse than talking to a blank screen. But do please keep your mute button on, your sound off, unless we um, ask you to talk to us. You can view today's event in either speaker view, where you can see the person that's speaking, or the gallery view, where you can see everybody like the Brady Bunch, uh, by clicking the right hand corner of your screen. We encourage you today to change your name on your little thumbnail to your actual name, rather than that of your partner or your child or your pet or your favorite rock band or whatever. And also, you know, as we do usually with our housekeeping, I'd like you to locate the nearest restroom and the emergency exits in uh, case of emergency. Also, the bar is open, so help yourself. Now, at Booklinks, we aim to be more inclusive of our regional and remote children's book creators. And after the success of our first virtual Romancing the Stars event last year, we decided that here was our chance to widen our horizons past Brisbane, the Gold Coast and the Sunshine Coast and cover the places beyond. Romancing the Stars is a wonderful chance to discover what books our local authors and illustrators have been creating for children in the past year and gives you an insight into their thoughts and the process of story creation. If you are a teacher or a teacher librarian, you might want to consider inviting these stars to your school for an author or illustrator visit. I'd also like to encourage you all to support the authors and their publishers by purchasing their books from the library shop at the Queensland State Library, which you can do online. And again, the link is there for you in the uh, chat group. Booklinks members can request a 10% discount, though some of the titles I've heard are already sold out. And in that case, I'd like to point you to your nearest independent bookshop. I'm also pleased to announce that even during a virtual event, there will be some lucky draws. Now, some important information on how tonight's event will run. We have three rounds with four literary stars each. The first round is made up of local book creators, the second round of regional authors, and the last round of regional illustrators. And tonight is extra special because unlike our usual Romancing the Stars, all books featured today are picture books. Each star has five minutes to talk about their books and you, the audience, can ask questions of any of these stars, these stars using the chat room or afterwards by putting up your hand and we'll give you the room to ask that question. And there will be questions after each round. So now get comfy wherever you are, put your feet up and snuggle in for a night of the rising stars in children's literature. And let me introduce to, uh, you to them. So Jenny, this is your, your cue to share the PowerPoint. 
and she started sharing the screen. All right. Ooh, virtual. We've actually got a solar system and stars. Fantastic. <laughs> Let's move on to the next slide. Oh, look at all these beautiful people. Am I talking about them, Jenny? Jenny's like, I don't know. What's that it, Jenny? It, it, well, no, what happens is when I'm sharing that screen, I've got my mute off and it's hard for me to talk. And when I go to find my mute button, I shut it all down. Am I reading a bio of everyone or not? No, just, well, introduce those first four and then go to the first person. Yes? Okay, I can do that. So, <laughs> um, um, and I don't have the bios in front, but I'm sure you'll be telling us yourselves who you are and, yeah. um, and uh, what you do. So we're going to start with our first group and I'll also be the timekeeper. So I've given you everybody four minutes. In the first group, we've got Brooke Graham, Inda Amat Zari, we have Dana Vox, Vox and Rory Mather. And now we've got our little thing back on. Oh, there they are. Look at those lovely people and with their beautiful books, Go Away, Worry Monster, Sally, How to Make a Friend and Sick, Easy steps and the Easter hat catastrophe or catastrophe. Haha, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, all right. Thanks, Jenny. <laughs> and who's up first? Brooke. Uh, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. Okay. I'm going to give you oh, five minutes. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Brooke and I live in Ipswich. Um, I'm a children's author and also a primary school teacher and a mum. And tonight I'll be sharing with you Go Away Worry Monster, which um, is published by EK Books and it came out in September last year. Um, the illustrator is Robin Tatlow Lord. And it's um, the picture book suitable for children four to nine years old with the themes of starting school, worry, anxiety, and resilience. And in the book, uh, Worry Monster represents Archie's anxiety. Uh, I was inspired to write this story after my daughter started to experience anxiety herself when she was nine. Um, and it just came out of nowhere. So after a couple of weeks of her anxiety worsening, I took her to the GP and we got a mental health care plan and started seeing a psychologist. So the, um, the techniques in this story are actually current evidence-based anxiety reducing techniques that we learnt through counselling. Um, so I thought I might show you some of the pictures as well. So you can see Robin's work. Um, yeah, what I love about the story is, um, and I didn't know that Robin was going to do this, but Worry Monster starts off as really tiny. And then um, through the story, I don't know if you can see, but he actually starts getting bigger and bigger. So the more Archie worries about starting school, the bigger Worry Monster becomes. Um, and she's also done a really good job of including the other characters. So we've got Archie. Um, I don't know if you can see Brown Teddy and uh, Toby and then Al is the nightlight. And so they help Archie um, get rid of Worry Monster. And so what Archie does is he uh, thinks about how he made Worry Monster go away last time and he doesn't want mum's help. So uh, he thinks about what, what he did. And so he remembers that he did some belly breathing. He thought about the facts of why he doesn't need to worry about um, starting a new school. And also, um, so he goes through the facts of why he doesn't need to worry. And then, um, I don't know if you can see, because I think I'm quite small at the moment, but um, Worry Monster starts to get smaller again. He decreases in size as uh, Archie realises he doesn't need to be worried. Um, yeah, so I hope you can see. I know that I'm quite small at the moment, but this is my favorite illustration. I love how um, Robin has shown so much emotion in the characters, even like Brown Teddy. 
he changes throughout the story. So you can see that his arms actually move and he's quite cranky. And even the dog, I love how Owl the night light's pointing for Worry Monster to go away. Um, yeah, so I don't know how much of the story I'm, I'm supposed to show, but that's sort of what the illustrations look like. Um, and yeah, like I said, I didn't expect for um, Robin to to show Archie or to show Worry Monster being sort of growing in size and then getting smaller again. And it took me a little while to get used to the idea of that, but um, yeah, I fell in love with the illustrations really quickly. Um, yeah, and what else do I want to say? Um, a little bit about getting picked up. Uh, I started writing the story in 2016 and um, it went through a lot of critique groups. And in 2018, I went to my first CYA conference and met with Anuska Jones of EK Books and uh, she loved it straight away. And within um, a month or two, I had a contract once they'd found Robin. And um, yeah, and then it was just two years of waiting for the book to, to come to life really. Um, so there are teacher notes with EK Books. If you go to www.ekbooks.org and um, I've just heard from the publisher that um, they've sold out, EK Books has sold out of the first print run. So they're, they're doing another print run, which is really exciting. But I just did a quick check and I know that there's copies still on Topia and Amazon, but um, yeah, EK will be waiting a little while for their next shipment of the books. Um, I don't know what else to tell you. I've started doing kindy visits last year. And that was really fun. I've done one school visit. But the kinder kids are really interesting. Um, they keep you on your toes and that they love the story. And um, I was actually really surprised at how much they understood of the of the book. Time's up. Good. Okay. I could see <laughs> yeah. you going, when is this time ago? Yes, I, I'm not good at speaking, but um, yeah, so that's it. Thank you. Well done, Brooke. All right. So if you have a question for Brooke, keep it in your mind. We can ask it after the four people have done their talking. And uh, don't worry, you're not small because remember, people can put their uh, speaker view on instead of the gallery view. So you're not as small as you think you are. All right. Which brings yeah. us to our next uh, author, uh, book creator, Inda. Hi everyone, I hope you can hear me. Um, I'm really thrilled to share my new picture book with you, Sally. It's evocatively illustrated by Anne Ryan and published by Fort Street and it's just been released last week. So I wanted to tell you about why I chose to write this story, which is a story about hope and kindness and refugees. Um, when I was growing up, I felt a lot of emotions for all the ills in the world. And even from a young age, I raged against um, the concept of war. And then I raged about the humanitarian effects of, of uh, you know, that followed like displaced persons, refugees and asylum seekers. And I really loved literature and the literature of war, especially poetry really struck me forcefully. And I still remember bursting out crying in the middle of a tutorial uh, for English Lit in fifth form because we were reading this Wilfred Owen um, poem and I just couldn't handle it. Um, and the power of those words led me to choose poetry uh, of the First World War as my thesis when I was in college, even though I was in the sciences at the time. So I was inspired and impassioned by all this literature, but I ended up doing medicine and surgery um, at uni. Um, I went to study and in England and as a medical student, I joined STAR, which is Student Action for Refugees. And my friends and I got to know refugees who were starting out a new life in England. And we hoped and prayed and lobbied for a better situation for people who've had to flee their homes. Um, and the humanitarian crisis continued unabated. Um, in 2015, I became a mom. Uh, so when I imagine running away from danger, I now imagine doing so with a child. And then I imagine doing it from the point of view of a child. And in 2017 or 18, I started writing for children. And I remember joining StoryStorm that some of you may know. It's an online program where you're given prompts and encouraged to come up with a picture book idea every day in January, and it runs every year. Um, so my mind was open for ideas and uh, with my existing passions and the stories pouring in from the news, particularly about the crossing of refugees across the Mediterranean, this story came to me. And 
not so fun fact. So in 2018, um, according to UNHCR, which is the year that I wrote the story, in that year alone, there were 139,300 souls of new arrivals into Europe by land or sea across the Mediterranean from um, certain countries in Africa um, and, and the Middle East. And a lot of people didn't make it alive. And a lot of people were injured, tortured, and abused along the way. Um, I dreamt up a boy who had to survive all of this. So he pretended he was a turtle. He was carrying his home on his back, which Anne's beautifully represented there on the cover. Um, and his name is Saleh. It's an Arabic name, particularly because a large pro proportion of refugees at the time were from Arab speaking countries. And partially also because as a Muslim, it's a language that I use every day in my prayers, but mostly because Saleh means goodness in Arabic. And I wanted to, I wanted that to be the central message in this story because I find that it's lacking so much um, in real life. Because as we know, um, in this country and many others, refugees and asylum seekers risk their lives um, to make this journey. And then afterwards they're made to wallow in detention centers without any freedom and without dignity. And another slightly tenuous connection is that Saleh kind of sounds like Salhafat, which in Arabic is the word for turtle. So then I wrote the book, I did all the things, I submitted it to the Right Links critique group, uh, which are a fantastic bunch. Uh, I sent it off to publishers and agents who by and large seemed to like it. And at one point I think it was even taken to acquisitions, but alas, there were no real bites. But then in 2019, I went to the CYA conference and had a face-to-face -face assessment with Meredith Costain from Fort Street uh, for two completely different manuscripts, like completely different subject and completely different tone. But I think from my discussion with her and her encouragement to resubmit, I thought it wouldn't be such a bad thing if I just slipped in one extra manuscript. So I did. Um, and a few weeks later, Paul Collins, who's also from Fort Street, emailed me to say that they wanted to publish Sally. So this book is out in the world and kudos to Anne Ryan, who not only I think illustrated the story of Sally, but then she illustrated the emotions of everything that I felt when I was writing it in these amazing, you know, sort of desert reds and, and her beautiful ocean blues as well. So what I hope for this book is that goodness is seen and kindness is seen and that little children like Sally are seen and that the rest of the world never stops trying to show them that they really, really are precious and that they matter. Thank you. So on time. What a good good way to finish there. Beautiful. All good for time, <laughs> Okay, No worries. Thank you so much. Now, also, thank you to everyone for adding you. their comments in the chat. Uh, it's lovely to see everybody's response to the books uh, and the stories. Thank you very much. Thanks, Inna. We'll move on to, to Dana Fox with her book, How to Make a Friend in Six Easy Steps. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name's Dana. I'm a picture book author. I live on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. Um, I've got two books to show you this evening. Um, very different in tone from what Inda was just talking about. So we'll just change pace for a second. Um, so this is How to Make a Friend in Six Easy Steps. And it's illustrated by James Hart. And he's a Melbourne-based illustrator. I'm sure a lot of people have heard of him. He's very experienced. And it's published by Scholastic Australia. Um, the story follows Rosie, the great white shark with 52 teeth, and she just wants a friend. She's lonely, uh, but she's feeling a little confident because she has her new book, How to Make a Friend in Six Easy Steps. And I'm showing you this spread because it's so cute, the way James has made a little bed and a blankie and a nightlight for Rosie, the shark. I think it's quite adorable. So we follow Rosie going through her six steps, and of course, they're very the six steps make complete sense but not if you're a great white shark with a step one smile so of course a great white shark's not going to do too well with this and she works through her six steps and she still is all alone so and kind of giving the ending away 
I wrote the ending and was inspired by my daughter who we used to watch for years trying to make friends in a park and she would confidently go up to other kids saying, you know, will you play with me? And it was heartbreaking seeing the answer was sometimes no, but always she would find a connection with a like-minded kid, like always. So that shines through in this book and I always think of her when I read this book. Um, it's a very accessible book. I think if you're in a classroom or at home to start a, a talk about friendship and being kind to others and what it means to be a great friend. Um, so I, I really like that quality that you can just share those conversations easily with the kids. Um, and I'd like to think that an adult can get a bit of a giggle out of it too because we're still trying to make connections and meet new friends. And I, I think it's quite uh, relatable for a lot of people. Um, the second book is called Ham and it's illustrated by Anna Demchenko and she's in Russia and the book's published by Larrikin House and the, the story follows Ham the pig and his farmyard friends and I'll just show you his farmyard friends this is a great spread to show you Anna's style of her animals her quirky style and the, they're just so entertaining with their big googly eyes. So Ham and his friends chop, saute and stew, uh, love their life on the farm. But when they discover that they're not actually pets, they're actually destined for the dinner table, uh, panic ensues. But there's the panic. And there's my favourite spread with Ham in a panic saying, I know I'll be taken. I'm gorgeously plump, voluptuous, wobbly. Just check out this romp. So they come up with several plans. Um, none of them work fantastically well, um, but I won't give away the ending. Uh, it's an entertaining story in rhyme, a um, bit of silliness about the whole thing. Um, there is a toilet humour joke in there, but I don't think it's too gross. Um, and the good news is that Larrikin has fantastic teacher notes on their website. Just download them, print them off, fantastic. There are lots of suggestions there. Um, I like the fact that there's quite a few different things you can talk about with the book, with the kids. Um, we've got friendship, teamwork, determination and perseverance. But we also have like a, a serious paddock to plate conversation if you want to have that with your children. Um, I wasn't brave enough to go there with a class recently. So I did a vegetable element, which is heavily done in the end of this book so we talked about vegetables growing above and below ground and what you like to eat and that was a they were really engaged so I was, I was really happy to have that element to the book as well after we've been talking about rhyme um lastly i've been asked if i grew up on a farm like where did the inspiration come from um i didn't i just think pigs are hilarious and i guess i was watching a lot of sean the sheep um, episodes when I wrote this quite a few years ago because my daughters love it and I was just giggling my head off so I think that might shine through the vibe of that show in in this book all right thank you wow 30 seconds to spare <laughs> Two shots. well done that was very informative and the comments are coming in in the chat room so have a read of those well done uh, Dana Okay, we're going to move on to Rory, who's got his he Easter hat to stress. Uh, I can't even say it. It's a good <laughs> tongue twister. Easter hat a test. Yeah, I'll let you say it. As well as Vlad's bad breath and Vlad's in love. So there you go, Rory. So um, hi everyone. I'm Rory. Um, I'm from Toowoomba in uh, uh, Western Queensland. I guess you say. Southeast Queensland, probably. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so my first book um, was uh, Vlad's Bad Breath, like Dana. It's published by Larrikin House. Um, the story is about Vlad who has smelly breath, but the reason he has smelly breath is because he can't see himself in the mirror. So you might be able to see on that uh, this tile page there, you can't see himself in the mirror. Um, so basically it's a story of friendship where he goes and seeks advice from a few of his different friends, but discovers um, to his dismay that they all have their own hygiene issues. Um, so it's a good story for approaching hygiene in a humorous way. It's all told in rhyme um, and with humor. Um, comes with a hygiene routine poster as well, you can pull out in the back. Um, so yeah, that's my first book that came out in September last year. And the sequel for it, Vlad's in Love, comes out in April uh, this year, but I don't actually have any copies yet, unfortunately. They're coming next week. Uh, but my second book to come out was Easter Catastrophe, and very similar to Dana again, 
um, public sorry, watch Rory, the sorry, Rory, for breaking in. There's just a little bit of chat um, saying that nobody can see you. So we've still got your video. Can we hear Rory? As long as we can hear him, please keep talking, Rory. Uh, yeah. We just we just can see only your photo. So just letting okay. everybody know, we know that's happening, but we'd love to hear from you, Rory. All right, no worries. So um, Easter catastrophe came out um, March 1st um, through Scholastic Australia, published, uh, sorry, illustrated by James Hart, just like um, How to Make a Friend of Six Easy Steps. And um, Dana and I, Dana and I are actually um, doing a book launch at Where the Wild Things Are in West End in Brisbane this Saturday. Um, and I'll be holding a, another book launch in Toowoomba on the 27th of this month um, at Walton Stores. So um, have a look online for them. Um, I could be found at Rory H. Mather, author on most platforms. So have a look for there. Um, I've got a few more books coming out over the next uh, 12 months. So my next book after Vlad's in Love is another book with Scholastic. Uh, that's coming out in July. I can't really talk too much about it. Um, but after that, I've got another book with Larrick and House called Rory the Line. And that's about a line that can't roar. And then followed by two more Scholastic books early next year, one in um, March, sorry, one in January and one in April, I think. I'm not quite sure. Uh, so yeah, I've got a bit um, going on at the moment. Um, but how am I going for time, Yvonne? Can you guys hear me? Yes, sorry, I was just uh, typing away, letting everybody know that, yes, I know we can't see you. Uh, you still got two minutes, so keep going. Mouth. Um, I think his video is not turned on. Yeah, we had that issue at the beginning. It will be on your end, uh, Rory, but just keep chatting. Yeah. It's, it's showing in that it's on the mind, but yeah. Um, yeah, so um, my um, journey in the publication came about um, over a very long time, a lot of rejection. Um, so I, I started writing books in about 2015 and at the time I was working in public libraries delivering story time to, um, to kids and I just fell in love with picture books uh, at that time. And so over the years I wrote heaps and uh, got rejected heaps. But in 2019, I started to get a little bit more success. Um, like Inda, I was at the CYA conference in Brisbane and there I met uh, my agent, Justine Barker, who um, is also Yvonne's um, agent. And from there, um, she signed me a few months after that. And yeah, it's been a bit of a um, whirlwind since then. So my, my goal as a, um, as a writer is um, just to create books that make kids laugh and to um, that also have a little bit of heart and humour. And I, as a kid, I was a bit of a... Uh, I wasn't a good reader, I wasn't an eager reader. So my, my other goal was just to create books that kids will want to read. Must be nearly time now, eh? <laughs> 30 seconds left, left, but we'll give it to you. That means we'll have a little <laughs> bit more room uh, in the questions, which must be now, right? Okay, so I've got my gallery flu, flu you on, and yes, thank you, Rory. Um, so I can see if you put up your actual hand, and when I call your name, you can ask a question of any of these four lovely authors. Has anybody got the hand up? Oh yes, Valerie, can you please unmute yourself? Um, I have just one question for, um, oh, I think it was, um, sorry, who wrote Worry Wart? Um, uh, Brooke. Brooke, yes, Brooke, sorry. Brooke, um, you said it was your daughter that inspired you to, where is Brooke? Oh, there she is. Um, you said it was your daughter that inspired you to write the book because of her anxiety. I'm just curious, why, is, why did you choose a little boy? Um, because I actually, the very first story that I ever wrote that's not published yet, but I hope it will be, is called Charlotte's Angel. So her, her father actually passed away when she was five. And so her anxiety came about um, delayed grief, really, when she was nine. And because I really want Charlotte's Angel to be published, I thought I'll save that character for her book. Oh, okay. And, um, yeah, so I chose a boy, and I guess I find it harder to write boys' characters. So I just wanted to give it a go, and uh, it worked. Yeah, you did a really good job, so well done. Thank you, Valerie. Mm -hmm. That was an excellent question, Valerie, and a lovely insight to what you're working on. Who else has got a question? Yes, Marge, Mar Margaret, yeah. 
Mug. Hi, I've got a question for Inda. It's really about your theme of goodness in your book, which I love. And I'm wondering, Inda, or any of the panels, uh, how do you go about teaching children goodness? Can you hear me? Yes, we heard your question. Are you there, Inda? <laughs> oh, yeah, I can. I can. It's a good question. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Can anybody hear me? Yes. Yes. yes okay all right good um oh how how do we i i don't think there's any one way you know it takes a village to raise a child and i don't think my husband and i are any more qualified with our our daughter than and any anybody else in the world um but we have you know it, it's 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 everyone it's teachers it's their friends it's the parents of friends um, and a lot of the time it is books and I think that when I was growing up um, you know the themes of goodness came out through characters and through plots and books um, they weren't really like kind of force fed or like rammed down my throat or anything like that but in a really in a really good story that's what I remember and that's what I take away um, you know from from a book that I love um, and I'm not saying that this is going to happen with Sally, but I think that I would like in every single story that I write to, act, to have a little bit of that line of goodness following through, um, and hopefully the characters and the plot are engaging enough for the kid to latch on to that and then mull over it in their own really, really clever way because kids are so clever and, um, maybe resonate, if not now, while they're in, you know, their parents' laps reading then maybe at a later stage in life when you kind of like reflect on things so I, I don't think I have the exact answer for your question Marg but um, I'm just hopeful. Thanks. Thank you Inna and thanks for that lovely question it was a big question I agree it was like whoa that's that's a big one. Um, oh Anna has a hand up. Anna did you want to ask a question? Yes uh, I want to ask uh, Inda as well. I was wondering what age group did she write? Hi, Anna. That book? What, what age group does she have, hello, uh, in mind for her book? Um, it's sort of aimed at six hello? plus, I think. Um, yeah, can you hear me? So it's it's aimed for yes, no, um, I can. Primary, you. primary school ages. So I'd say sort of six, six plus. Um, I think that the more uh, subtle messages and kind of like the harsher messages that you can relate to the news in the world you could discuss that with with kids who are even older um but we have made the character a little boy who looks like he's maybe about five or six and we've tried to keep it gentle so that you know um the younger kids might not know all about you know refugees and you know how badly they're treated or what they have to go through in such detail but there's the idea that this kid's going through a hard time but he's just one of us um so when he needs help we should we should help and um you know kindness is a sort of overarching scheme but um in, in the sense of the illustrations and the text i'd say kind of um uh, probably lower lower primary Thank you. Fantastic. Okay, we've got uh, time for one more question, if anybody has one. Yvonne, Michelle there, has her hand up. There were a couple of questions in the chat room. You've All right, I'm just going to run out of time, Jenny. So I'm just going by hands at this time. Um, but what I suggest you do is, um, I'm sorry if it's a bit noisy behind you, my family just came in. Um, each author can answer a question in the chat group as this, as well. But for now, uh, just give the floor to Michelle, who had a hand up. Hi, sorry, it's actually just my daughter, Summer, my six-year-old here, who loves Vlad's Bad Breath from Rory. And so Summer's gonna ask a question. I hope that's okay. Absolutely. Go, Summer. Boys, quick. Hi. So he just, she just wants to know why the character was a vampire. <laughs> Rory? <laughs> well, um, basically, I thought that would be really funny um, because vampires um, 
Can you see me? Um, yeah, vampires yep. um, can't see themselves in mirrors, but they have fangs. So I thought that would make it kind of funny to um to the readers. Oh, thank you, Rory. She's hiding behind my leg. She's listening intently, but she's just hiding. She's embarrassed. But I thought that might be nice for her to listen to an answer from an author. Thank you. Very, very cool. And now, Rory, you're a rock star. Oh, yeah. How cool is that? People are shy. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm shy <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> that's all. We have to be brutal here. That, that's all we can uh, answer right now. But like I said, maybe the authors can answer some of the questions in the chat group. All right. So we're going to move on, if that's all right with Jenny, to put on your slide. Yeah, to I, our was, next... I was going to say we're actually running ahead of time because... What? Well, there were four people spoke for five minutes. That's 20 minutes. And then another 10 minutes for question time. Taking oh, 10. All right. Good. Sorry about that. I'm just going to pick one out of the chat group like that. Uh, people are asking, uh, Barbara is asking, if anybody's happy to do school visits via Zoom. Good question. Enda's got thumbs up. Brooke's got thumbs up. Rory's got thumbs up. I can't see the last person oh, because you're, I've got you all in gallery view. Dana's got thumbs up. She's got two thumbs up. I think that's a yes. Um, oh, also a good question from Jenny. So I just realized that was you, Jenny. Dana, did you write ham because you're a vegan or just for a laugh? <laughs> uh, just for a laugh. Um, although I feel really uncomfortable talking about meat and eating meat a little bit more these days it's just like not it's not it's on my mind a lot and i i haven't actually eaten ham or bacon for quite some time now and just doesn't seem right um but no it's it's no i still eat meat sorry i feel like i should apologize or something it's just for a laugh <laughs> too late to apologize now it's intense <laughs> Um, I'm just, am I missing any questions? I'm going through the chat group, uh, Jenny. I thought it was a good question though. I don't, I can't see any more questions. Have I got any more hands up? We're well, just gonna move on because we might just, you know, need some more time later, I think. So can you put up your slide, please? Jenny's looking, yep, there we go, very intense. Oh, oh, it's it's hiding behind my. Uh... Oh, all right. <laughs> so we've got the little Queenslanders alphabet book uh, with uh, Sally. We have the hotels for bees with Alison McLennan. Uh, we've got oh, we've got the bird in the herd with uh, Kat Appel. On oh, no, it must be me on the other one with the little lambs, Great New Zealand Easter egg hunt. Okay, thank you. Now you've seen all their lovely faces and the front covers of their books. We're going to move on to um, all the way to the other side of the world <laughs> to Sally. Sally, I'm going to start my timer. Great. Hi, everyone. So my name's Sally Scudamore. And as Yvonne says, I'm on the other side of the world. So I'm joining you from Leeds in the United Kingdom today. Um, I'm going to share my screen so that I can um, share some of the pictures of, I'd like to talk about two books today, but I'll start by just telling you a little bit about myself. So um, I, my background is I'm a speech and language therapist or speech pathologist in Australia, um, but I don't work, despite the fact that I have an interest in, um, a new interest in um, writing children's uh, picture books, uh, I work in a very adult acute hospital type role as a speech pathologist, but I engage the pediatric speech pathology part of my brain for this interest that I have, and particularly inspired by the children on that you'll see on the screen at the moment who are my many nieces and nephews who are back in Australia. So when I moved to the United Kingdom about four years ago, um, keeping connected with these guys in Australia 
telling stories and engaging over um, you know, FaceTime uh, messenger chats and, and sharing stories from our week was something that just kind of evolved. And that really became the, the inspiration and the driving um, force behind, you know, eventually surprising myself by being able to have um, some children's books published that were really, you know, born out of just story play with, with these guys. So the first book that I want to talk about is the little uh, Queenslanders alphabet book. And this was one of the um, stories that was part of the series that the State Library of Queensland uh, published in, they came out in December last year. So it's uh, written by myself and illustrated by uh, Sophie Beer. And um, this, uh, I, I was completely blown away when something a proposal that I put into um, to the state library was accepted um, because it was a very very basic concept that um, my nieces and I came up with um, to to make an alphabet book with each letter of the alphabet um, celebrating a location in Queensland, celebrating animals, flora and fauna of Queensland, but also, um, you know, with my speech pathology hat on, trying to build some sound awareness, some, um, you, you know, um, vocabulary uh, using uh, verbs. So each of the uh, letters has a very structured um, sentence structure. So it's a animal, doing something in a location and we really tried to I'll flick through so you can see some of the um, some of the other pictures but we really tried to uh, celebrate a, a really diverse range of types of locations in Queensland um, the the thing that I really love about this book is the illustrations Sophie did a really really beautiful job of um, kind of making it engaging for children the colors are beautiful um, the, I, I love the yabbies yucking in Yapoon. It reminds me so much of my mum and her friends at the coffee shop. Um, <laughs> um, the hula hoop, the humpbacks hula hooping in Harvey Bay. Something that I, I really love about the book is the um, the the verbs and how playful they are for children, and and that engagement in terms of being able to maybe do do play act things out, um, but also explore the pictures to look for other things that start with you know, the sound that that's, um, that's profiled on on that page. So um, the, la the last picture I've put here is, um, I think something that I, I mean, I'm very new, I'm very amateur to this, but I think there's nothing that makes me happier than when I see pictures of uh, children enjoying my books. And I love this one. This is my friend um, in Harvey Bay with her with her baby. And I think what strikes me is how this is a book that seems to, that children of varying ages seem to respond to and get different things from. So it's really engaging for little babies to look at, but also, you know, right up and for um, sort of that four or five age group, there's something to, to get out of it in terms of phonological awareness and, and sound play. So the other one, book that I just want to talk about quickly is Rusty Runs Away, which is um, was my first um, published book earlier um, last year and this uh, is very close to my heart because it tells the story of the true story of our very adventurous um, family pet Rusty who uh, took himself on a 1200 kilometer journey um, hitchhiking on a semi-trailer from Gundawindi in Queensland which is my home where I grew up on a farm to Snowtown in South Australia and then there was quite a um, national drive across social media to, to orchestrate getting Rusty home. He flew home um, and this was a story that um, you know, we, we, we really shared as a family and it seemed like a great opportunity to be able to share Rusty's uh, very cheeky character, um, it, you know, more broadly. So I love this book. The pictures that Lexi Watt did are based on uh, photographs of my family of Rusty. So this for me is like taking a trip home. Um, and, you know, it, it, it tells the story of um, Rusty and his complicated relationship with my father, Farmer Gruff, who likes to think he's really tough. Um, and again, it's the illustrations really um, blow me away. I think it captures some landscapes of uh, Australia that are just you know, absolutely stunning. Um, so, yeah, that's, um, is it, does that take me to yep. about time? Yvonne? Time, 
Yep, I gave you yep, a few was... extra seconds. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, all good. That was absolutely uh, beautiful. I'm, and I'm trying. Uh, I'm trying to get rid of myself. I'm just. Yes, yes. You'll have to stop struggling. <laughs> stop, stop sharing your screen. Uh, and I'm going to have to look at my screen. All right, that was fantastic. We're going to move on to Alison McLennan, who's got uh, two books: The Hotel for Bees and Growing Pains. Hi everyone, I'm Ali and I'm a Brisbane picture book author and I have pneumonia. So I'm really sorry if my voice gives out or I cough my lungs up during this. I'll try my hardest not to. Um, so this is Hotel for Bees and it was published by the State Library of Queensland as part of their first five forever stories for little Queenslanders series. And I entered it into the um, flora and fauna section of it. And it features uh, native Queensland bees and flowers all the way through it as well. Um, it's a story about a little boy named Benji, who is afraid of bees and fuzzy flying things and being out in the garden. And his, <clears throat> his big sister, Charlotte, um, teaches him about how special and magical and important bees are and together as a family um, they build a bee hotel in their backyard and then they start building bee hotels for other people as well and one of my favorite spreads um, features the little bees in the hotel doing things like having a shower and reading a book and listening to music and that apparently is the favorite page of all the kids that are reading it um, so it's a really lovely story about um, a wild, little wildlife warrior um, who's wanting to protect bees. Um, it's illustrated by Erin Dunn, who is a Rockhampton artist. And this is the first ever um, picture book that she's illustrated. And I think she's done an amazing job. And um, where it's, I believe it's being entered into some awards by the State Library. So that's really exciting. I think it's sold out at the State Library shop, but the main point of it was for it to be available to borrow from every library in Queensland. So every public library, library in Queensland, you'll be able to go and find a copy of it. Um, I was inspired to write it when I saw a YouTube video one day about this lovely old man who was building his own bee hotel and I had no idea that all bees didn't live in a hive with a queen. Some of them are solitary and need somewhere to live. So um, I saw this hotel for bees and I thought what a great concept for a picture book. So I sat on the idea for a little like maybe a year before I wrote it um, and then I started submitting it. Um, my other book um, Growing Pains is coming out. Um, it's being published by EK Books and it's coming out this April or May, depending on COVID. It was supposed to come out last year, but it got um, delayed because of COVID. Um, so it's coming out soon. And Growing Pains is a book about a little boy named Finn whose family plants a tree in the backyard. And Finn becomes really curious about the tree and worries and wonders about it, wonders if it gets, if it's cold or hungry or lonely. So he takes care of his new friend. And um, one night, his Finn's nightlight goes out and he's really scared of the dark. And it occurs to him that his tree is outside in the dark by itself every night. So he goes to check on his tree. And when he sees it standing brave and tall in the moonlight, he thinks, well, if tree can be brave, then so can I. So it helps him to overcome a fear. And it's illustrated by Melissa Johns. She's a Melbourne artist and illustrator. And she's incredible. She uses recycled and upcycled materials to make collages, which she turns into illustrations. And because the book <clears throat> has a major um, environmental theme in it, I think it's really appropriate and very cool that the illustrations have been done with recycled um, materials. Um, the inspiration for that book came from my son, Connor. Um, when he was a lot younger, um, we were on a trip to the US. We were in San Francisco and there were a lot of homeless people there and Connor started to really notice them and worry about them. And we were walking along a street one night and my husband gave him $10 and said that he could buy himself a souvenir from one of the shops. 
And he stopped us at one point and said, I want to give it to this homeless man instead. Can I give it to this man? We said, yeah, of course you can, darling. So we stopped and he went and sat a load of this man and had a chat and gave him his $10 instead of spending it on himself. And um, it just stayed with me that moment. And I think that's what inspired the story. And with a lot of my writing, I tend to um, gravitate towards stories that are about empathy and kindness and curiosity. And so for me, the tree in the story could represent anything, a tree or a homeless person or um, a grandparent in an aged care home or a new kid that starts at school that's from a different culture. Um, So I really like the idea of curiosity leading to kindness. And um, I think my time's up. Thank you, everyone. (laughs) I'd better unmute myself. Well done, Ali. That was great. All right, my timer's going off. Um, I think I'm, I think I'm, I'm next. Is that right, Jenny? Yes, she's nodding. She's nodding. I'd better give myself five minutes. <laughs> Hang on. Put my timer on. Oh, I gave myself 10 minutes. That's not very good. 10. All right, here we go. So my name is Yvonne Mez. <laughs> uh, and um, I just had uh, an Easter book come out um, last year, which was called Little Bilby's Aussie Easter Egg Hunt. There we go. It's out again in the shops now, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) And um, very pleased last week or the week before to have a New Zealand version of the Little Bilby Easter book story um, come out in New Zealand. And of course, they don't have little bilbies there. They have little lambs. So it's called The Little Lamb's Great New Zealand Easter Egg Hunt. There we go. I love how the title is is humongous and like the lambs are are hiding in there. Um, A little bit about myself. I have an early childhood background. I've been working in the early childhood field for over 20 years and I've worked with children of all ages of many different cultures and uh, remote Australia uh, as well as in cities. And um, I've always, you know, been drawn to the toddlers and um, I really love board books. So there is a board book version of the Bilby one as well. Here we go, it's supposed to be all just board books, but they've made it bigger books. So I love it because, you know, children can chew and get to know books at the same time. I do uh, try to um, put in some different concepts because you can't get away from that with an early childhood teacher. So. And basically, the, the, both books have the same story. And there are just a few changes in there. So we have the element of surprise. So the inspiration, I guess, guess came from eggs. You know, when children find an egg, and I've worked in childcare centers where, you know, a little egg has fallen from a tree, and then we all take it, and then we all wonder what's in it, and we might draw paintings and drawings and see what could be inside it. And it's that sense of discovering that an egg can be anything. And, um, you know, being in Australia, I had to say that in an Australian context. And of course, eggs, you know, it has to be an Easter book (laughs) when it's eggs, right? So um, it's a lovely rhyming little story. Oh, I should grab the other, the other one. Actually, what I'll do is I'll share my screen. I'll make sure that my timer is still going, yes. And I'll show you some of the pictures. Share screen. Oh no, that's, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I need to find my, oh no, not sharing my screen, sorry. <sighs> share screen, there we go. Here we go. Can we see that? Please put your thumbs up. Yep. Okay. So um, it's a bit up close. Oh, I haven't done this very well. Oh, here we go. So near mountain scrub and ocean front, we tiptoe on our Easter hunt. We look over, we look under, and then big round egg, big round egg. Oh, whose egg could you be? Cree, 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 this egg belongs with me. And of course, you cannot have a book about New Zealand without a kiwi in it. So (laughs) we had to have the kiwi. And it goes on. Now, in the Australian book, it's got different animals. But the New Zealand uh, version came out 
just with these beautiful uh, birds that are all endemic to New Zealand. I'm going to share, sorry, don't look at that. This, this is a note I thought was interesting to share that I sent to the publisher. I had to figure out what noises New Zealand birds make. And I had to find all these different websites where you could hear sounds because I, I kind of can guess, you know, what a, you know, what the, what a turtle is a snap and um, the Australian animals were a bit easier, but all these different bird sounds were a real, um, a real problem. So I did a lot of uh, work um and then i had to figure out hang on is it the male is it the female that incubates so that we you know we get that right um and i sort of asked them to add a, a kakapo because um the new zealand uh, hachette had um had suggested that we just use the birds and i really i always heard of the kakapo and i found it such a fascinating bird so i asked them to put that in so luckily they did they added an extra page and um, what else did I put in there? Okay, and I wasn't sure about the New Zealand landscape because I've never been um, and whether it should be forest hill and ocean front or mountain scrub and ocean front. And um, oh, there's my bell. Hang on, I'll press stop for the timer and I'll stop unsharing my screen. There we go. Um, and we ended up with mountain scrub and ocean fund. I guess that's more, you know, indicative of, of New Zealand. So that was a, a really fast look at that book. Sorry if I rambled. All right. Thank you very much to myself. <laughs> and we'll, we'll move on. Uh, I need to find the, the right page to our next person up, which is Kat Appel. Hey, Kat. Yeah. Hi there. Um, so um, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to share. I've got two books that I'm sharing about as well. So I am going to jump in and just get going with that. I have a screen. So, I mean, a video thing. What should it wait up? Play that. Um, so I've played it at the very end for some reason. Giving me a moment. Oh. Okay. Now, oh, Jenny, now I've got to get back. I've lost. <laughs> so I thought I had to share screen first, but it didn't work this time because I lost my other thing. No, I've got, I'm right. trying to find your name in the thing so that I can make sure that you are um, a host. A host. Oh, so okay. I can't, I can't. Well, when I, I have to play first, don't I? And then share screen or do I? No, I've got to make sure that you can share screen first. And I can't find the name. Can you even? Let me try that. But do I have okay. to play my video before I share? I'm um, playing my PowerPoint before. I thought I did. We did that yesterday. I found. Uh, sorry, I found Cat there. It's a blue K, but I can't uh, get her to become a host as well. That must be you that does it, because I'm the co-host. Okay. So it's oh, Sally. Might be up the top. Yeah. Am I? If I? Yeah. I can. Oh, yeah. I'm disabled. Yeah. Oh, so that's. So when I played my video, it took over my whole screen and I couldn't actually see our, um, I'm a co-host now. Yeah, right now. So now share screen. Well, oh, just a minute. I'm going back. Sorry, you're getting, <laughs> share my screen. Yeah, share, sorry. Oh, and no. now I play video. Is that working? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Sorry. Um, so I'm talking about up and down on a rainy day, and that's one of the first five forever stories as well um, with the State Library of Queensland. And, and then I'm also talking about the bird in the herd. And I put that up there. At the moment, I've got three rural, well, not completely rhyming, because up and down on a rainy day, it's, it's, I guess it's sort of called rhyming, but you'll see why I say that in a minute. So um, this is my second and third. I, I put them there because I did want to say that there's been 12 years between This Is The Mud and what was my second one, Up and Down On A Rainy Day. It snuck in very quickly because the bird in the herd was in progress for five years. So in my head, that's my second book, but actually in reality, it's my third. So, um, I mean, I have had verse novels come out in the middle of it, but it is um, sometimes a hard road to get books published. So up and down on a rainy day, uh, uh, I'm on the farm, obviously. That's why I've got three 
uh, rhyming stories at the moment. They're not, not all my picture books are rhyming and I've got some coming out that aren't, I mean, sorry, are rural and I've got some in, coming out that aren't rural. But this story, I put this here to show you that this beautiful picture at the top is what that dam would normally look like. And it's about 300 metres full of water. The picture at the bottom is actually already out of date and it's even shrunk smaller and it's just, um, it's just a dry dam that should be 300 metres of water and it's currently about 30 metres of mud and, um, sorry, something's dinging, I'm not sure what that is, um, of mud. And so that's heartbreaking. That's what I look at on every day. And that's today what I look out on. And so when it rains, it is a huge thing. I mean, on the farm, when you are reliant on rain, then it's a real celebration. And it's not just something that I will celebrate or something that my kids would celebrate as well with me. My husband comes home. It's something that as a family, when you are being desperate for rain, you do all celebrate. So that's why I put that one there because that's where the story idea came from. Now, why am I, oh, sorry, now it's gone too far. So this is another dam which is also physical from my house. And this is one of our favourite play areas on a rainy day. And we would go down, in, not in the actual dam itself, but in the overflow that you can see flooding down the paddock there. And we would play in the rain. So um, when we were, when I was doing the stories for State Library, um, it was like it's for first five years of the child's life. So it was very, a young age group. So I, I submitted a couple of things, but this one here, up and down on a rainy day is um, lots, um, it's just the up and down and very, very few words. So I'm just wondering if I stop my share, um, and yeah, hopefully I can get back into it. So it's actually just, everything is something up, something down. So it's like sun up, rain down. Let me see the fun. Beautifully illustrated by Janet Turner. And this is Janet's first book too. So it's very exciting to work with her for it. Um, wake up, jump down. So it's sort of rhyming, <laughs> if you can call that. And so it's all these two word combinations, mostly coming um, of up and down, the things that you get um, up to on a rainy day. And so I did actually on my slideshow, when I go back to share my screen, I put um, to here. There we go. Yes. So this here is probably one of my favourite combinations and they're down at um, the overflow or down the dam, scoop up, paddle down, tail, tails up, heads down. Um, I love the fact that um, my editor for the story and uh, Janet, the illustrator and I all had a Jack Russell dog that was kind of influential. And so, you know, obviously we have this sort of Jack Russell dog there, which is rather gorgeous. So um, this is not my voice. When I came to... <laughs> put pictures with my boys um it is a true thing that on a farm with boys and mud and rain and when they're little well, with kids probably in general um there was not always clothes involved so I can't share pictures of my boys oh sorry it was with me <laughs> but I can't share pictures of my kids because oftentimes they were running around Starkus enjoying the rain so this is my niece actually um yes when we were together as a family enjoying a rainy day and um, talking resources. So, I mean, State Library is putting out videos. There's so much stuff on the State Library site for all of the books. Um, so that's definitely worth going to that. But on my website, I've also put together um, a list of activities that you can do. There's, I think, 16 activities in that pack. So um, that you could do to go with with the book or pick and choose, obviously, like not, you're not likely that you'd use them all. And then on my website, I also link across to all the different things that I found that State Library have and, you know, different things when I see things that relate to the book. So that's there on catswhiskers.wordpress.com. Um, and this one here is a completely different one. Um, I just absolutely adore the, the, the colour of this, the vibrancy of this. And I, I know Renee Tremel is um, the illustrator for The Bird in the Herd. And so I said it's been in progress for five years, but actually I wrote the story 19 years ago. So The Bird in the Herd is my book of patience. And it was written for these two adorable little farm boys. That's about the time and the age they were when I wrote the story. And I look 
out from my kitchen window one night and I saw a bird in the herd that stalked as the walk. And I was like, ooh, I've got to play with this. And so that um, became bird in the herd. So that's a very familiar thing from my bed, uh, from my kitchen or from from my house. Um, for Renee with the illustrations, I took her took lots of photos and sent them down for her of birds and cows and things like that because Renee had experience with a dairy farm with her grandfather. But most of my books will feature beef cattle because we are on a beef cattle property and we do eat beef. Um, Pat, we're going to have to wind up here. I gave you extra I, minutes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so I'll quickly whiz, whiz through um, some of the inspiration. And there is a double spread of the book. See the bird in the herd that stalks as it walks, eating slugs and the barks that the herd stirred. And it accumulates, and the story accumulates. And I, oh, just as of today, this is why I put it up here. You can actually, they've put the teacher notes up, which are fantastic, but we've also put together an activity pack to go with it, which has got games and things, which is something a little bit extra that Renee and I put together. So have a look at that because we had a lot of fun doing that. So, okay. Um, fantastic. Fantastic, Kat. All right. Yep. See if you can stop sharing your screen. And then. That's I Say very quickly to everyone that Kat and Renee are both coming to Story Arts Festival Ipswich and they're going to be playing some of those games after school one day with kids in their family program. Fantastic. Oh. All right. We're this excited. Is, yes. Uh, this is the time where you can ask some questions. So we've got about 10 minutes. I'll set my trusty timer again. Um, so I can't watch the thing as I'm doing that. Okay, so now. put up your actual hand or put up your little flaggy hand. But I can see Deb. Deb is there. Okay. Hello. I've actually got a um, question for you, Yvonne. Um, you mentioned, because I love researching for my topics in picture books, and that bird research was phenomenal. Um, how long did it take you? Like, you obviously self-initiated that. And how did you do it? Was it just Mr. Google Bird, or how did you go about it? Yeah, it was mainly Mr. Google Bird, and you soon find the most trustworthy websites. But I also went to YouTube and, um, and and just to get sound bites because I wanted to hear it. And of course, then I, gained, I had the trouble where like, well, if it's the male that sits on the egg, then it will sound different than a female. I, I, I never quite realized that male and female birds because I don't live on a farm <laughs> that there is a difference. Actually, I also remember I was looking, I had to research egg size, like, you know, how big is the egg compared to the bird and, and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it was mainly Mr. Google and just, it took me, yeah, it took me, you know, in between a good couple of weeks. But I do, like you, I love that type of research. Yeah. So did you do that beforehand or was were you prompted by the publisher? Like, or did you just do that? So so because uh, Bilby did so well, New Zealand Hachette asked me to write it and they came up with the concept of the lamb and the birds. Excellent. Except for the extra birds that I threw in there. <laughs> but there was no research done on any of that. And of course... Even though it's a picture book and it's for very little children and nobody might ever know, there's going to be, there might be somebody who goes, that's yeah. not what a kiwi sounds like, or that's not the size of an egg. Or, and also all those eggs are mainly white, you know, with, when you have your emu egg or your cassowary egg, you know, they're all going to be different colours, whereas all these birds, so I had to be, I had to rethink my adjectives, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's such a little book, quite a lot of research. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Any other questions? There's one in the chat room. Okay. Um, Sarah, did you want to ask that question? Okay, I'll ask it. Uh, oh, do many of the authors have agents? If so, how did you find one and what is your agent experience? Brooke is saying, Sarah, I don't have an agent. I like meetings at publishers and conferences. I can speak for Rory and myself that yes, we do have an agent here in Australia, but I sold my first couple of books without an agent. And in Australia, we're very lucky that we can do this without an agent. In America, it's very hard to get published without an agent. Uh, any of the other uh, people want to talk? Um, do you have I, agent? Um, I don't have an agent. Um, I got Hotel for Bees published by submitting it directly to the State Library of Queensland. 
and I got um, Growing Pains published by meeting with Anushka Jones from EK Books at a CYA conference. Yes, yeah, so conferences are a very good place yeah. to meet publishers. What about you, Kat? I don't have an agent. I have at some one stage, but all my books have come about as a result of my submissions and my networking. Um, I'm not averse to having an agent, but I have learned that you need to have the right agent. So it's not just any agent. So really, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, so it's something that I'm looking at. Um, talking. I mean, I've even got a friend in America, and he's he represents himself, and he's got. Um, books published with big ones as well so yes it's it's not as easy over there probably but um, I think the conference thing thing is a good thing and I know um, so three of my books have come about so this is the mud and, and um, um, and I didn't say that, I guess, with the bird in the herd, but this is the Mud and Bully on the Bus, both won CYA competitions, and so that sort of grew from that. So that's another thing that's important. And the bird in the herd, um, they used it as the illustration text in 2012, and Renee didn't win the competition, but I loved that her artwork was matched to the age of the audience. And so um, I sort of tucked her, well, we met at the conference and I also heard how much she loved the story and we've connected. And so we did this one differently that we submitted it um, like as an author agent and yeah, went from there. So, which is not the norm. And I'm not advocating to do that, but, um, but that worked for us with this book. So yeah. there's many pathways. Uh, yeah, for sure. And yep. Sally, uh, thank you. She doesn't have an agent. She says, I've often wondered what they would offer and if I should find one. So maybe that was a good answer for you there. Uh, somebody asks about, you know, how to go about um, uh, opening doors. Um, sorry. Uh, uh, I'm trying. I'm reading the things. Um, uh, oh, what is the best way to network for new authors? So we've got some uh, some good answers. Thanks, Rory. Um, I'm going to have a give a, give a big 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 plug for Booklinks, uh, who uh, let's um, um, run Writelinks, which um, you need to Google Booklinks Writelinks. This is what we do: we help authors and illustrators, new, brand new, emerging, or whatever. And of course, there is SCBWI. Uh, or, or well known as Squibby, which is a global network. So uh, come in and find us there. And right, good questions, everyone. Um, I think uh, somebody asked uh, if you have a verse novel coming out next, Kat. I was just typing an answer. Yes, we're just working on that at the moment. So um, probably for next year. So yeah. Got two picture books and a verse novel in progress at the moment. So rhyming picture books too. Fantastic. So diverse. All right. Any more hands up? I'm I'm looking at my screen. Actually, I've got I might be missing people because oh that's a full There's screen. Hands up, Sandia has hands. Oh sorry, Sandia. Hey. Oh. Hi. Um my question is for um Sally. Um, and it's, uh, we, I love your alphabet book. It's so colorful and I love, it's, it's very lovely to read. I just wondered um, for Zed, um, you had Zilmer and uh, did you have any other options for that? Or was Zilmer the only option that you could find? And I'm asking because um, we live in Zilmer and we we're so excited to see that you had Zilmer there and we went to the library um, and found the book there and I showed it to all the librarians there and we were like oh Zilmer library's in. <laughs> very exciting. I think that, that's a good question. It was so hard for some of the letters to, um, to find places and I do remember Z would have been a letter that I that I struggled, but my my process was to kind of, you know, look for. Um, there was a lot of Google research, but it worked really nicely to have a mix of you know really well known cities, really well known tourist destinations. But I kind of like that there's some, you know, uh, less known or you know. Um, more suburban or, or rural type places in there as well and um, it's quite funny that you know when people are reading the book here in the UK I've, I've shared it with some people you know um, 
Orgothella, that's a tricky one to start with. Um, you, you know, people recognising, well, where is Orgothella and how do you even pronounce that? But I love that, that... Um, and I, what we what we did in um, developing the illustrations was kind of try and um, uh, get some research around the town to know what is unique and special to that place so that when people, you know, when you're looking at it from Zilmore, you're looking at it from Winton, that the illustrations will resonate with your experience of, of that place. So, yeah, thank you. Great question. All right, we, we have uh, time for maybe one more question. Um, have I missed any in the chat group there, Jenny? Sorry, I'm trying to keep my eye on everything, but uh, I think I think that's it. I'm going to go with that's it. I can't see any hands up. Oh, 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 okay. I think that was a hint, but moving on. <laughs> Thanks, Jenny. We're going on to group. Um, three. Uh, we've got uh, Brent. Um, sorry, I'm trying to juggle things uh, with koalas like to. Uh, we've got uh, Nicola, Nicola, Nicola Hooper with a cow that swam out to sea. Uh, we've got uh, Charlie Thompson in the deep end. And finally, we've got Rachel Tribut. I don't know if I'm saying that right, I'm sorry, with one remarkable reef. I'm looking forward to hear from the illustrators. And we're going to get started with Brent. Welcome, Brent. You have five minutes. All right, I can't hear you, Brent. No, you're very quiet. Have you got your mute button is off? Try. Have you got some ears you can use? I can see your mouth moving. That's about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let out, you sort out your technical issue. I'm going to get someone else to come first and I'll come back to you. All right. Right. That means we're going to go on to Nicola. Sorry, Nicola. Jumping you in there. You'll need to take yourself off mute. Yes. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Nicola Hooper, and I am a first time published um, illustrator, I guess, as far as children's books go. I used to um, work at the, the newspaper and I had illustrations published there, but this is the first time with children's books. And um, I was lucky enough to get the gig through the State Library, the first five forever, Stories for Little Queenslanders. Um, this is my book, The Cow That Swam Out to Sea, which was written by um, Pamela Rushby. And... Um, and I, I've done, like I say, this was all new to me. And um, I, uh, I've done like a little presentation which sort of showed the process. So I'm a practicing artist, that's my sort of job. Um, and so I regularly make work um, with drawing and lithography. Um, and so I'm just gonna share, sorry. Okay, can, can we see? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, this was the manuscript that I received. I also put the book together. So I did the layout of the book as well. Um, and it is a true story about a cow called Danette who got caught in the 2011 floods out at Lowood and got washed out to sea. She was um, three days all through the traveling through the, the Brisbane River and was found out past luggage point. Um, so the story um, is one of courage and being brave. Um, and I, the, the layout here, it, it shows how I set the pages up um, I will, with Pamela's manuscript. This is sort of the process that I used where I draw the illustrations. Um, I use part lithography, which is sort of this part, and put it together. I would normally create my work purely with lithography, but because of COVID and I was in isolation <laughs> and lack of materials, I, I sort of did it this way. 
And um, yeah, so this, this was sort of um, the process. It was all really new to me. So I found it really interesting putting the actual book together as well as illustrating Pamela's manuscript. And um, oh, I, my end pages, um, I chose to show the, I, I create a lot of wallpapers and stuff with my artwork and I, I wanted to, to create like a wallpaper with my end papers that um, show the different times of the day. Um, and I use the colour palette of, um, of the floods, the Brisbane River, the browns and the greens. I'd worked at the newspaper during the 2011 floods, so yeah. I sort of was familiar Hello. with those stories. So, um, uh, and yeah, yeah. Um, so we had a really nice experience with the whole thing. Um, and it was, it was lovely to get the opportunity um, uh, to, to get involved um, and, and do this. Um, I did a submission to the State Library. I had written uh, another story myself, which got shortlisted, but wasn't selected, but I was selected as an illustrator. So I felt very fortunate and I'd love to do some more um, in the future. Uh, um, so yeah, how much longer have I got left? Have I got much more? Much more time? Half a minute. So uh, we can, sorry. half a minute. So I think oh, it's half good. a minute. So is that, um, yeah, yeah. Um, so oh, my, my artwork and stuff can be viewed um, uh, on my website and um, yeah, yeah. That was lovely. Thank you. I always love to have a look at the process and uh, at the pictures so okay. and get an insight. Okay. Thank you, Nicola. We're going to, I think, Brent, you might be working now. Try saying did something. I, did I just ruin your, your, did I ruin that for you, Nicola? I'm sorry. Oh, you're fine. It's all Okay, cool. cool. Everyone <laughs> seemed to maintain their composure, so I appreciate that. Um, uh, just like Sally, Alison, Kat and Nicola before me, I was part of the First Five Forever program that the State Library did with the, uh, the wonderful books they produced, mine's the Koalas Like To one that I illustrated. <clears throat> um, I'll just pop my screen up. I thought it might be, can I do that? Can I share? Just give me a second to make You're it right. possible. Um, I thought I might show you guys a couple of things to do with the process uh, that I did with the book, but uh, the book's written by Shay Millwood. She did, she did such a wonderful job. Um, like it's like I have a three-year-old and I think this zero to five thing like it just fits so wonderfully for the age group the repetition uh the concepts it's all very all very fun for them so I was really really stoked to be a part of this um so this is the book unfortunately you can't see it's got a really beautiful um gloss pattern of koalas on the front so it looks quite wonderful but plain here but when you actually get a hard copy it's got a really lovely um a pattern of koalas doing all sorts of things on the front. Um, the next one. So this is sort of how it come, came to, to be. I, I sketched it out. I did a lot of storyboarding. I was like, maybe a couple of ideas for the front. Um, I'd love to do a really cool pattern of end papers. Um, did some play around with different characters. It's just a number of characters that we sort of mucked around with. I really like to work with um, minimal palettes. Uh, so throughout the book, there's not a lot of color um, and it, they're sort of the muted tones and it's got a little bit of a retro feel to it and everyone in uh, in this project was really on board to, to sort of realize I guess my vision for what I thought might work well with the text so it was really it was a really fun um, project to work with uh, everyone um, then I just storyboarded the whole book out um, for them and sort of tweaked ideas and, and, but for the most part, I think we landed pretty well with the storyboard. I, that, that's how I like to work. And I think it was a really well received way to go about it. Um, I think if I'd gone spread for spread, I would have driven myself mad. Um, just trying to think, oh, what's next? So in, in storyboarding, it was, was created, we were able to see it as a full whole kind of thing. And, and, you know, you could really tell if something wasn't working because it was jarring to the rest of the, the feel of the book. Um, then, turning that storyboard image into the final product. So this is one of my favorite spreads uh, where um, I guess the idea is there's this antagonizer uh, adult who's like, hey, koalas do these weird things. And the kid's like, I don't think they do. They don't actually do that. And he's like, yeah, yeah, they don't do that. They do these weird things. And throughout the book, he kind of 
teases them with these ideas that koalas do weird things. So this is the one where um, they bounce up high and flap their wings. And the kids are like, they don't bounce up high. They don't flap their wings. They don't fly. Um, and the flow of this, this spread was a particular favorite of mine. Um, and then just into some spreads with the book. Uh, this is another one that I love. They're just the bold uh, red and the, the sort of the Mars feel. Koalas in tutus. Um, was great researching poses of different things that ballerinas may do. Um, koalas in weeks. So it's, it's, just, it's a really fun book. Um, I'm a graphic designer way back. Um, I do a lot of editorial illustration and have done for quite some time now. So sort of mixing the two worlds of, of trying to consider design, the block color was a real purposeful idea of how do we separate the two speakers and make that really clear because the kids were usually always talking first, but the, the adult was second, but normally you'd have the text sitting up high for the first speaker and the text lower for the second speaker, but we sort of had to figure out how we'd successfully work the space. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm, I don't know if I'm rushing here to to uh, to get through it all, but that's that's kind of some stuff with that. Have I got time? I got time You've left? got about a minute left, Brent. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, I, I, well, it was a wonderful pro process to be a part of. The whole team was was awesome. Um, Shay and I have probably talked more post the project, um, and we just just love each other's work uh, and, and what what each of us did with it. So it was it was a really good pairing. Um, yeah, that's me. Fantastic, with time to spare. I really think we should just have an all illustration uh, romancing the star because I just love looking at all these process um, images. Fantastic. Okay, we're going to move on to Rachel. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay, and can I share a screen, please, if possible? Have you made her a host, Jenny? And he's working on it. Okay, I can get started and then, oh, I am, great, okay. So uh, my name is Rachel. Um, I've been in Australia for 15 years, but my French accent hasn't gone, so uh, sorry. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna talk about a book called uh, One Remarkable Riff. And it's a book that was also published as part of the, um, sorry, I, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> so, <laughs> So it's another one, part of uh, the State Library um, publication. And it's written by uh, Kelly Byrne. And I'm gonna share a screen with you to show you the things, if it works. Uh, sharing this one. Okay, so that's the book in, books in the collection. Um, oh, to tell you a bit about me, sorry. So I'm an illustrator and graphic designer. I've been in Queensland for three years now. I also work at Where the Wild Things Are. It's a bookstore in West End. Uh, it's the best place in the world if you love children's books. And uh, I actually met the people from the State Library when I was working there one day and they told me about the project and I got super excited. So I um, entered, I, I sent some samples and got accepted. So that was amazing for me to be part of this, especially being fairly new to Queensland. So this is the book. And it's a counting book for toddlers uh, that is based in the Great Barrier Reef. And it's, um, it involves like all endangered animals. So um, all through the books, you just follow, you count, you count animals, it's pretty simple. Um, <clears throat> so it is also rhyming. Um, it's supposed, so I guess the aim is to bring awareness to endangered species and um, uh, the illustrations so like in terms of the process and what I wanted to do with the illustration is like the animals had to be recognizable but we wanted to make them cute and soft and friendly so I try to do a bit of stylization but still make them really recognizable um, yeah so this is kind of how the book looks like or the pages um, so to to try to be accurate as accurate as possible I used a lot of photo references so here is some uh, example of how I went from photos to, to the, the animals. Um, I think it's pretty accurate, except for extra little smiles and, and rounder eyes. <laughs> so that's all aimed at being cute, I guess, because it's fairly young, uh, aimed at a young audience. 
Um, also, sometimes we try to, especially, I think the author did a lot of research as well, Kelly, but for example, like we try to put some real facts in it. So I don't know if you knew, but Rementas, when they feed, sometimes they do those uh, circles like this, they, they feed in a circle. So we try to integrate like real uh, behavior as well. So that's a fun fact. Um, also in terms of like how we went through the, uh, the timeline of the book. So it starts above the reef, the reef and then we slowly dive in. So first we see above, then we looked at the animals that are above the reef and then we dive in. And as we go on, the night is falling. So the colors change. The aim as well was to not have just uh, the same blues all along because it could have been a little bit uh, tedious after a while boring so um and as you go along eventually it's nighttime and you get back to the same view of the reef but at night um at the, on the book ends as well we um you can find all the animals in the book so you can uh, recognize them and find them so you can go back and do a bit more research and on the other back ends uh we did um some extra animals the whole idea was to actually, uh, uh, so the fun story about this was that when I did the concept work, I drew a crocodile because there were supposed to be crocs in it, but then they decided, I think it was too scary, but the people at the state library absolutely love the croc, so we had to put him in the book somehow. So then I had to draw extra animals so we could have the croc, which is like the original croc. And I don't know if you can see, but it's a lot more stylized than the other pictures. But we kept it that way because I don't know it's it's pretty funny, and I made him that funny because I didn't want him to be too scary. So <laughs> it, it's uh, yeah, so it's good that you got in. Uh, in terms of the process, I didn't have a lot of time to do it all. I think we had like five weeks to do everything, so I was like very fast paced. So I had to go straight in like with colors. That was um, I was lucky because I think underwater is a lot more forgiving. If I had to do a lot of characters and a lot of cars and buildings, that would have been a nightmare for me. <laughs> but underwater was fun and and yeah, so I could go straight in from um, yeah, you know those kind of sketch that you can see above to final. And um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it for me. That's it. You've reached your the end of your time as well. So fantastic timing! Beautiful <laughs> images. Just all of I know she's reached the end of her time, but there was another book that she's done that's on the notables. Could you just we got a minute to just add that one? Yeah, of course. You're the boss, Jenny. You give us extra time, we'll take it. Oh, you want to see my other book? Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, it's <laughs> this one. Yes, that's it. It's on the oh, notable. Oh, yeah. I, yes. I saw that one. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm going to try to be quick. Uh, so this, this one is called Hold On. It's written by a scientist called Gina uh, Newton. It's published by Sarah Publishing. And this one is very different in terms of style. As you might want to see, it's, very, it's a lot more accurate. And it's telling the story of the spotted handfish. Oh, yeah. It's called Hold On, Saving the Spotted Handfish. And the spotted handfish is, is a fish that only lives uh, in Tasmania. There's only a thousands of them left and it nearly got extinct. So this is the story of how um, scientists saved him and basically now he's uh, thriving again. I mean, thriving for a very small population. And uh, yeah, it's a story. And also uh, I got to work on this because I was in Tasmania for 13 years before being in Queensland. So this is the connection. So yeah. and. Still time or am I done? No, well, do you want to say something else? Oh. Uh -huh. um, no, that's about it. So it's been, uh, it's, it's a notable for 2021, which is amazing. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it because it's a fairly cryptic little fish that no one knows about. But I think it's great to see what um, people can do to preserve uh, the, or preserve animals and also to, um, how would you say that? You know the damaged humans do what we do to fight it and make it better sorry my english is broken when i'm nervous yeah same here but you're doing an amazing job rachel great and thank i think you. i'm done yes you <laughs> thank you and congratulations on that thank you uh, we're going to move on to last charlie hello let's test your sound hello can you hear me Yvonne? absolutely Okay. Uh, firstly, I just want to say thanks to everyone for 
I guess, the opportunity to be a part of it. What a real privilege. I was just, I'm not sure if it's possible to um, share screens where I might be able to show um, some of the illustrations from the book. I'm yep. not sure. So, Jenny will make you a host uh, or a co host, and then you'll have control. I'll see if I've got the opportunity here. Um, is that working now? Yes. Yeah, so I might just be able to go through some of the illustrations. So as I said, um, yeah, my name's Charlie. Um, come from a background of education. So I've been in the education system as a teacher around 20 years and um, also had a background in uh, hip hop music. And I think I was able to utilize some of my experience as a poet and hip hop artist in this text, um, particularly with writing uh, a rhyming storybook. The, Storybook's called In the Deep End, so I was actually the author and the illustrator, so really enjoyed that process um, and was really fortunate enough to be involved with the uh, State Library Queensland um, series that came out late last year. Um, I guess for me, the story was inspired by uh, my own children's experiences and fears of um, swimming in the pool and being scared of the uh, creepy crawlies. So as you can see on the front cover there, it's an image of the uh, creepy crawly. Um, and also one of my children being scared of the uh, food dispenser in the kitchen. So sort of incorporating some of those ideas and the story is really about um, overcoming fear. Um, sort of interesting, um, the process, the original um, illustrations that I submitted were considered uh, a little too scary for the age group. So I had to refine those and make the monster, especially, which is the creepy crawly on the front, a little bit more um, friendly. Um, and through that, I was really inspired by um, Where the Wild Things Are and another text um, that really inspired me was um, Spike Milligan's Bad Jelly the Witch. So um, I might just show a couple of the illustrations, but because the text was actually based around water I wanted to use watercolour um, throughout the text to give um, a sense of movement and light. Um, and probably also wanted to play on the, I guess, the fears and imaginations um, of young people as we grow up and looking at, I guess, the different fears that we have and how, you know, sometimes different objects can take on um, a life of their own. Um, and how even as adults, we, we all um, have, you know, different fears, but, um, you know, that uh, there's a process, I guess, of going through and making sure we can, I guess, work through those different fears that we have. So that's a little bit about the process, but definitely a lot of fun playing around with the uh, uh, creepy crawly and um, trying to make that object come alive, but also um, not being too scary for the age group that the the whole series was um, marketed at. So yeah, just feel really privileged to be involved in um, the process and love the opportunity to be both um, the author and illustrator. And yeah, something that I definitely feel really privileged to be a part of. Fantastic. Lovely to have a look at that. Was this your uh, first one or have you yeah, so this is my first um, storybook that I've had the opportunity to publish. Um, as I mentioned before, I've probably got a background um, and was talking to Jenny earlier um, this afternoon, um, had a background with um, Shakespeare education and looking at the links of that between um, hip hop music and poetry. But this is sort of my first sort of venture into the um, storybook uh, world and yeah, definitely it was a challenging experience doing both the text um, and the il illustrations, but also really rewarding and the whole process. Um, obviously, there was lots of editing, but, um, you know, it was great working with um, other people throughout the process to ensure that the final product was, I guess, the best possible um, outcome for, for the idea. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, can you please stop sh sharing your screen? Yep. Thank you, Charlie. Oh, that must mean that we've got another 10 minutes to ask questions of these beautiful uh, illustrators. Oh, hands are coming up. Uh, Alison McLennan first. 
Um, not a, a question, but I just wanted to quickly say um, a massive congratulations to all the illustrators of the first five forever series. Um, I know the illustrators are normal, they normally have quite a you know, bit of time to get the yellows done. And these guys were really under the pump. They only had, I think, a few months to get it done. It was um, it was really quick. And um, I think their illustrations are so stunning in all of the books. And um, many of them are this is the first time they've ever illustrated a picture book which just blows my mind because they're so beautiful so I just wanted to give a shout out to the the illustrators and say congratulations thanks Ali you're right they're all gorgeous yeah we do a little a little yes Deb I can see your hand up yes I can see you too in that we'll get to Debbie uh, first um I would just like to reiterate that congratulations to everybody tonight I actually have a question for you Brent um I agree with Alice and I was looking at that your your illustrations and the words and I was getting a very Dr. Zoyce kind of um, feel and an Andrew Joyner sort of retro feel as well and I was wondering you said you have a graphic um, uh, artist sort of background Do, um, is this your usual style or is this something that you felt really coupled well with the um, author's text because the two just seem to meld beautifully together um, in that retro fashion as well and it seemed very you know intimate with like a Dr. Zoyce thing um, which is a good thing is that your usual style or are you able to do others as well or is that what you feel comfortable with? I just popped my um, my website in there it is it is my usual style I was really stoked to get um, a text that like just worked well with that like it was it was totally um awesome to be like this is something I'm comfortable with um I saw in the comments somebody said it was like a duck feet like mm -hmm. duck feet is on repeat at my house <laughs> these are the books that I grew up with and these are the books I love to share so to when the moment I saw the text uh Shay's text I was like oh I think you know I think we're in for something good here so yeah it was just awesome I didn't I this is my style that I do it was wonderful to be able to do it in a book because nine times out of ten, it's for a um, for a uh, uh, you know Qantas magazine or some sort of editorial content, um, yeah. and so so to be able to to marry it with the book was was an awesome awesome uh, project. Yeah. So this was your first um, illustrated pictures a uh, children's book then experience. Yes, I've got two titles that are more like, hey, my niece wrote a book and I illustrated that sort of stuff. Uh, so I've done I've done the labor part, but with zero gain. Um, but this is definitely my first, um, you know, published out there in the, in the real world. Uh, picture book. Oh, it's very sleek. I loved it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Timothy and Brent. Inda, what's your question? Hello. Uh, I just wanted to say that I've completely blown away by all the illustrations are so beautiful uh, but my question isn't actually about illustration and it's for Charlie and I'm uh, interested to know who's your go-to hip-hop artist when you're talking to school kids about poetry? Yeah great question. Um, definitely heavily influenced um, by a group called Jurassic Five. They're one of my favorite um, hip-hop groups. Um, Really big fan of um, Talib Kweli um, as well, uh, Most Def. Um, yeah, so I guess for me, um, try and incorporate, I guess, socially conscious hip hop artists um, and uh, really highlight um, hip hop artists that have a lot of substance um, to their lyrics when I'm um, talking to young people. Well, thanks. Great question, Inda. I love that combination as well, Charlie. Uh, any more questions? I'm looking for the thingamajig. All right, well, if nobody's got questions, I got a question for each and every one of you. <laughs> I'd like to know a little bit about, so I know some of you, you, Charlie already said watercolors. I'm thinking, Brent, are you using uh, digital only? <laughs> yes I am <laughs> yeah yeah uh, Rachel I really wanted to ask you that question what are you using I'm digital as well uh Photoshop and a graphic tablet so yeah. it's it's drawing but yeah like um all digital yeah yeah fantastic and Nicola um mine's mostly by hand so um 
yeah, yeah. Watercolor and lithography is. Um, lithography. Yeah. And Charlie, you're doing it all by hand as well with the watercolor? Yeah, so a combination of pencil uh, and watercolor. Yeah, so cool. Oh, yeah, oh, I love it. Okay, uh, Emma, did you have another question? Because your hand is still up. <laughs> I did. I didn't want to be greedy, but if oh, nobody no. else is asking questions, um, I'm curious with the formats of the book. Um, you know, do you decide based on the story that's given to you whether you want a vertical, a square, or a horizontal format, or is that decided for you by the publisher? Uh, or e for everyone. Okay, I'll start with Charlie. For me, sorry. So Nicola starting. All good. Go, Nicola. Yeah, mine was decided for me. I was I was given a um, a, a a book size and an example um, of a book that yeah. So that was it. Okay, great. <laughs> what about you, Charlie? Did you decide on the format? Yeah, mine was decided uh, for me, but I think it was based on some of the original um, sketches um, that I sent through. So um, even though it was decided for me, I think. Um, because of the initial um, illustrations provided, that's that definitely impacted that decision by the publisher. Yeah, great. And uh, Rachel and Brent, I'm interested in your thoughts as well because um, they are graphic designers, aren't they? In uh, so they, I'd like to know, did you have an input in that, Rachel? Um, no, actually, both the books I've shown I've designed cover and uh, inside layout, but no, the publisher had decided. So I had to work with what the format they gave me. Great. And what about you, Brent? Uh, yeah, I worked with Joe Hunt on the book design, and we actually just got long listed for the Australian uh, Book Design Awards, awesome. uh, which is very exciting for this Congrats. one. Um, and yeah, it was it was awesome. It's really cool. But um, I don't know. I don't know whether like because when I storyboarded, I was just like, here's my vision, and then it was always that shape Radical. and size and they're like yeah cool or whether they secretly were like well we've got a place for that so lucky he got in early but yeah it was I was always had a that sort of uh, portrait thing in mind with when I was doing it thanks guys thank you what, one more question the last one uh I think because then we'll have to oh Rachel did you have a question <laughs> no no I had to raise the hand <laughs> but I just no I just forgot to say uh yeah Joe Hunt also was working uh with me so it was a collaborative work and yeah, she was amazing to work with. So I think she should be mentioned for sure. Yeah. So that was in response to Julian's uh, question about who were the editors and designers working with you at SLQ. Mm -hmm. um, any, anybody who is an author, uh, who, which editor did you work with? If you had your book with the first five forever. Um, I work with Christy Bushnell, so who I've worked with with my first novels with UQP um, so yeah. previously. So and she's just a treat to work with. And Joe also um, was with our cover. In fact, Joe did both of my book covers, the, the Bird in the Herd as well. So yeah, fantastic. Uh, did everybody else work with uh, Christy as well? And uh, no, oh, sorry. Christina Schultz. I worked with the Schultz, yeah. So the um, UP um, previous people, right? And I put the book together, and Joe just, um, you know, um, fixed up what what I had um, messed up, I guess. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah. You worked together. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you messed up nothing. <laughs> um, uh, what have we got to say, Charlie? Oh yeah, I was just wanted to say I also worked with uh, and. For me, um, that was one of the most exciting parts of the project was to have the feedback from uh, an external person and um, be challenged in different areas. And um, that process, I think, definitely helped make the final product the best that it can be. So, yeah, definitely, I learned a lot through that process as well. Yeah. I had Vanessa talent and she was amazing. Thank you. Uh, Rachel, did you have your hand up? Yeah, and my, uh, the editor was working with me is Vanessa Pellet. I hope I'm saying her name right. Yeah, oh. and the, some um, people at the State Library were really amazing to work with. It was delightful. Really this collaborative. So good. I hope they do it again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, I think I'm going to uh, leave the questions here tonight because we're going to have to start wrapping up. 
Uh, but we're not wrapping out up without uh, Jenny uh, giving us some lucky draws and showing us if there's any books to be won. Yep. Uh, so usually when you when we're at a face to face event, there's heaps and heaps of book to give away, but it's a little bit tricky virtually. But uh, Jenny, did yeah, I'm making you hang in there till the end. I just want to give you give a plug because we haven't got a great deal coming up just at the moment, except on Sunday we have got a young writers workshop uh, from one to two thirty. It's called Let's Talk Dialogue with Chris Bonders, who's a brilliant workshop presenter. It's all on Zoom. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, if you've got a kid who's nine plus who would like to come online, if you're a BookLinks member or, you you know, for your kids, it's free for you to register if you know your code. And otherwise it's $10 and that gives them one login so you can have a few kids doing it. So it's a good deal. Okay? To find out what we're doing at any time, you go to booklinks.org.au and under the What's On tab, you will find, uh, oh, sorry, up here, what's on booking. And if you want to look at any of the things that we've recorded afterwards under what's on, you'll find the event recordings afterwards. Okay. So now I have got three books. I've got names in a, a box here. I'm going to randomly draw out three names. Two, three. And if you're here, let me know. Okay? Tyrion and Perkins, are you there? I don't see it. I think I saw Tyrion today. I don't remember. Oh, Tyrion. no, I can see you there. Hi, you. hi, I'm here. Okay, Yay. Tyrion, you find a book. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Do you know which one? I, I, I will give you the first one on my pile, which is The Bird and the Herd. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'll Wonderful. Put on that one. That's by Caterpillar and Renee. And when you come to Ipswich later in the year, you can get them both to sign it. Okay, the next name are they, is Joe Sandu on in the session? Joe? Yeah, he's here. Joe? Okay, Joe, I am going to give you one remarkable wreath illustrated by Rachel. Fantastic. Uh, I'll find your addresses in where you registered and I will post it to you. And the final one is Yalda Adele. Is I think Yalda's Yalda here I've seen Yalda's name and she's I think she was on before, but I think she might have left early. Oh, okay. Or she did she... say she had to leave early. Okay, okay you got to be here to win it. Drawing no, it. she was here the whole time. You reckon I should post it to her? And yes, say, yes, she was. She just had sent a lovely message saying that she had to leave early. You cannot right, take that away. Right. She's her. going to get up and down on a rainy day by casting the pole. Good, good. I'll make sure you've got it, Jolda. Okay. <laughs> That's it. They're That's the it. Lucky people. Thank you. Oh. And and thank you to everyone who participated. Um, thank you to Yvonne for being a fabulous MC and presenter. And Yvonne, tell us how much money our people donated on tonight. Thank you all. We received three hundred and four dollars and um, and donations, and all of that goes straight back to Booklinks, putting on more fabulous uh, events uh, just like this. And while we're on the uh, theme of saying thanks, thanks all the staff, thanks to all of you for being here, uh, people watching. Uh, thank you to the library shop um, for and uh, for uh, being a, a sell bookseller. Thank you to the publishers who have donated the books. And uh, finally, uh, as usual, my biggest thanks goes to Jenny Stubbs, who works tirelessly to make events like this happen. She is the one who loses sleep over every little detail, sorts out last minute's dramas, and makes sure that everything is organized to a T. Thank you, Jenny.